Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is an R22 to R438A conversion. So that's MO99 refrigerant. So that is a retrofit refrigerant. We've got the system vacuumed down presently, and it's holding 180 microns for the 10 minute standing vacuum test while the vacuum pump's off and isolated. We're going to be using a three port uh, manifold gauge set, but the issue is that we don't have a saturated temperature on the gauge for MO99, otherwise known as R438A. So we're going to be using the Danfoss refrigerant slider app, and in that app we have access to 80 different refrigerants and their saturation points, and for MO99, that refrigerant actually has a bubble and dew. So depending on if we're checking superheat or subcooling, we're going to need to select one or the other. So right here, you see we have bubble and dew, and dew is used for superheat, and we're going to be using bubble for subcooling. So if you don't already have that app, you can go ahead down in the description below and take a look. I have that link right there, and you can head over and get it. So right up here we have the factory charge, and it states 6.74 pounds of R22, and we're going to put about 95% of that weight in with the R438A. So the system's been running for about 8 minutes now and we're gonna check the system charge and subcooling because the indoor unit has a thermostatic expansion valve at it. So that TXV did not have to get changed. It's an R22 one, and it shouldn't have to get adjusted for R438A. It should be pretty accurate. So we see that T1, we're reading 88 degrees, and we're gonna go ahead and use the Danfoss refrigerant slider app in order to determine what the saturated temperature is right here. Because you can't use the green inner ring because that's going to actually be off. It's actually going to be lower than that. So you see we're reading a temperature of 86 degrees on the liquid line and we're reading a pressure right here of 185 PSIG. So what we do is we take our Danfoss refrigerant slider and we make sure we're on bubble for checking subcooling and we're going to put our PSIG in right here and we're going to use our keypad down here in order to do it. So anytime you want to go to temperature or pressure you just go ahead and tap on it right there and now we're going to go ahead and put in our 185 PSIG. So our saturated temperature is 91.3 minus 88, and we only have 3 degrees of subcooling. So what we're going to do is we're going to add refrigerant, and we're going to watch that subcooling. That should decrease. We just saw it's actually fluctuating between 86 and 89, uh, but it's, it's still low on refrigerant. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit. I'm going to add this and then we're going to also check the superheat just to make sure that the TXV is doing its job. So let's go ahead and just let this refrigerant uh, get mixed in the system. We're going to click to T2 and that's going to give us our temperature on the vapor line. With the refrigerant slider we're going to go ahead and switch this to do and we're going to put our pressure in right here. So our pressure reads 64 PSIG so we're going to put 64 in right here and we read 42.5 degrees saturated temperature at the evaporator quill. So 57 degrees minus 50, uh, 42 and about 15 degrees of superheat. So 15 degrees of superheat is what we should have as a target basically because the TXV's job is to maintain the superheat at about 10 to 14 degrees. So we can't adjust the superheat without adjusting the TXV. Uh, we can't adjust the uh, superheat with the refrigerant charge itself as long as we're close. If it was really low on refrigerant, then yeah, we're going to have a high superheat. But if it's anywhere around in the range and the TXV has liquid coming into it, it should hold right around 10 to 14 degrees. Uh, and that's at the regular superheat at the evaporator coil. We're reading total superheat, which means it could pick up a couple degrees by the time it gets all the way out here. So that's why we had about 15 degrees of superheat. So that's good. I just wanted to make sure that everything was good and healthy and that there's no liquid going into the compressor. If you have superheat, then you know you don't have any liquid going into the compressor or saturated refrigerant going into the compressor. 
So now let's go ahead and flip back over to our liquid line. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click right here and we're gonna click on our pressure and we have a pressure of 190 now. So 190 and we see that we have 93 degrees as a saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. So 93 minus 88, we have five degrees of subcoiling. So we need to continue to add refrigerant. Up at the rating plate, it was calling for eight degrees of subcoiling. So we're pretty close. We'll go ahead and let that sit for a little bit and check it again. If it's calling for eight degrees, I like to be just a little bit higher, uh, maybe nine degrees, uh, but basically anywhere's around there within three degrees, plus or minus of eight is the correct refrigerant charge. And if you have a thermostatic expansion valve, you can go inside and check the delta T across the evaporator coil to make sure that you have 18 to 21 degree temperature uh, decrease. If you have a piston, uh, that's a different story. You know, if you do get 18 to 21, that's great. If you don't, it might not be because you have an inadequate refrigerant charge. It may just be that you have high humidity in the building. But with a TXV, it should be able to handle that 18 to 21 degrees unless you have another issue. I'm going to continue adding just a little bit more. What you want to do is, as you're adding refrigerant, this pressure should go up and this temperature should basically stay the same or go down. So as that gap widens, that's your subcoiling. And the subcoiling is basically the, the amount of liquid that's inside the outdoor condensing unit. What it does is it changes from saturated state to liquid and then the temperature uh, decrease between there and where it comes out of the liquid service valve, that's the subcoiling. Now you see our temperature is at 85. Let's go ahead and check again. We're at right about 190, 190 PSIG, and our temperature is about 85. So 190, so we got 93 minus 85. All right, so we got 192 as a pressure. So we got 192 and 94 degrees roughly. So 94 minus 85, so we have nine degrees of subcoiling. So that's good. So we're calling for eight, we got nine, and so we're good to go. So that refrigerant charge is good. I'm now gonna shut the valve at the bottle and I'm gonna weigh that refrigerant into the vapor line as well. I'm still gonna monitor my subcoin just to make sure that I'm within the three degrees. I wanna make sure that I don't overcharge it.
and I'm going to wait a couple minutes just to make sure I'm going to check my sub cooling and if my sub cooling is still good uh, then what I'm going to do and if it, if it could use another maybe one degree of sub cooling what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh in the liquid that's in the liquid line back in through into the vapor line so presently we're at 192 PSIG and at 85 degrees and so you can see we're at 94 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. So 94 minus 86 is 8 degrees of subcooling. So if we do put it at 9 degrees or 10 degrees, that's still good. And in fact, I like to get it right about there just for, you know, the next person down the line that connects and disconnects their gauges. Um, you know, we're not on the low side of the required subcooling. So since we're holding at 192 PSIG and 86 degrees, we have 8 degrees of subcooling. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my temp reader because when I shut this valve and disconnect from this port to weigh in the liquid back into the vapor side, I'm not going to be able to check subcooling anymore. So you see we have our valve off right here. We still have refrigerant in this liquid line. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our uh, service hose right here is still off and it still is. So then we're going to open this valve and it's going to take the refrigerant that's in this hose, go over to the service hose and from the service hose right into the, the vapor line right here. So after we're done this, we still uh, should have maybe about nine degrees uh, of subcooling, possibly 10 degrees. But we don't want to go ahead and waste the refrigerant. And I, like I said, I typically like to get it one to two degrees above the required subcooling. So once you see that the gauges are both reading the same pressure, you're good to go. And we're going to shut this off and we're going to disconnect here. All that's left in the gauge is just vapor. It's no liquid in there. So it's only a very small amount of refrigerant. Now what I like to do in order to check to make sure if the valve cores have reseated, I put my valve core tool back on here and I put a little uh, leak detector. This is the rector seal leak detector. I put that right in the end. Make sure it doesn't drip out and uh, then just basically make sure that it doesn't bubble. So after about a minute, uh, we'll go ahead and switch this and I'm going to put this valve core uh, removal tool on this one. But you see that this uh, line is sweating right here and it's sweating over at the port. I'm going to go ahead as soon as I take this off, I'm going to put my locking cap on uh, just to make sure that I don't get any moisture on the inside of the port. All right, so we're good on that one. We'll go ahead and take this off. That bubble leak detector can end up getting blown out with compressed air or nitrogen. And here's my locking cap. Okay. That one's good to go as well. So if you're looking for the refrigerant slider app, I have that link down in the description below. It is free and is a great resource to get. And if you're looking for any of the tools used in this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you're looking for another Dan Foss refrigerant slider video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.